Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome to another video with your host, Andrew. Why don't you join me today on a, what is quite a windy day out here in England, and I hope that doesn't uh, really come across too much on the video. Anyway, I just wanted to apologise first off. Um, I didn't do any content last week, twofold. Basically, uh, it was just too hot. It was reaching about 40 degrees uh, inside, and that's just... Too much of an oven to sort of work in. Plus, it really affects the, the battery life on the camera, and I didn't really want that. So that's one reason. Also, I'm involved with doing a Lord of the Rings fan fiction uh, with a friend. So that uh, took over the weekend as well. So I do apologize. And uh, I'll actually, I'll give you a link to the, the video which we're working towards. It's called Fog on the Barrow Downs, and it will be fantastic. Anyway, let's roll the credits and uh, just get into the meat and bones of this. Okay, right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to be talking today about is these customised Lamy uh, fountain pens, which I am holding here in front of you. So, uh, I thought what we'll do is we'll start in order of how I um, painted them, and then I'll give you a little brief introduction about them, and then I'll talk to you about my uh, Etsy store at the end, although that'll be very brief. Anyway, let's uh, start off, um, first of all, with this pen, which is a scene inspired by, uh, well, our village. In fact, I've got a couple of those pens. Uh, so this one is some wheat fields with uh, poppies with a setting sun. And this was, well, it's not my first one, but it's my first completely painted um, barrel. The previous two pens which I've done were just really patterning. Um, actually, no, no, tell a lie. I did do a one based on a koi fish, which was fully painted. So this isn't technically my first, I do apologize. Anyway, yeah, I'm really happy how this one turned out and certainly using the white primer as the basis, basically given me a lot more flexibility in terms of how I paint and it's given me a much better finish. So yeah, I'm happy with how these have turned out in general. Okay, so the next one is another village scene, again, from the village where I live. And um, this one features a tractor track going up to a tree with some sort of uh, light fields in the background. When I say light fields, fields which have been hit by the light of the sun. And um, I think it just sort of separates the tree out nicely from the fields. Then in the foreground, we've got some nice poppies with some blades of grass because even in the picture, which I did this from, uh, it wasn't necessarily, it was a nice photograph, but it didn't necessarily lend itself to a pen. So. Yeah, that's why I added in some poppies, just to give it some foreground interest and some height to the pen. Uh, so yeah, that was um, my first landscape, well, true landscape painting. Then I thought, let's just take this one step further. So one of my favorite artists of all times is Monet, and I also like uh, Van Gogh or Van Gogh, or however the Dutch pronounce it. And this one is featuring very tiny little brush, uh, brush strokes. Uh, just to emphasize that impressionist look. And this one is sort of for my imagination, but I would imagine this is somewhere in Indonesia or Thailand. And we've got some fishing boats there. And what I quite like about this one is that I've actually got some very fine um, brush strokes. And this was the first time I used something called retarder, which is essentially a a liquid which you mix in with acrylic paint and it will slow down the drying process. And it really helped, actually, it really did help. So yeah, I was very pleased with how this one turned out, especially with the, the mountain in the background. And I actually just did a custom pen for a gentleman in Denmark, so based on a very similar scene to this. Lastly, I thought if I can just do that uh, detailed rigging, how far can I actually take my artwork? So I did this on these um, Sakura petals and uh, blossoming, blossoming uh, Sakura plants as well. Oh, it's a Sakura tree, I should say, not plants. And yeah, this one was a, a real challenge. So I started off with uh, these three up here, which I'm just pointing to. Um, and I was really happy with the amount of detail I've managed to um, pack in. Very, very fine brush strokes, as you can see as I turn this around. And each individual petal has been outlined by hand. And I'm telling you, that was a challenge. <laughs> um, this pen took in total about eight hours to do. Uh, which is quite a long time for such a simple pattern, but sometimes it's those simple patterns which can really throw you, and you just think, well, when you get into it, that won't take too long, because the actual initial drawing which I did with this 
didn't take very long at all, maybe 10 minutes, if that. But unfortunately, like most things, uh, when you start getting into doing detail, it's a bit of time. But I'm really happy with how this turned out and how I've managed to get the, the brush strokes uh, applied here. I would love to get some better brushes for detailing, so if you've got any suggestions, I know maquillage artists use relatively stiff brushes, and that is something which I'd like to potentially invest in. And actually, talking about Urushi, Urushi is something I would desperately love to learn. So if you know anyone out there who do give lessons in Urushi, please, please uh, do get in uh, contact. Uh, I'd love to get into doing maquillage pens um, at some stage, and I think that would look absolutely fantastic on some pens. So please, 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 if you are listening to this, do reach out to me and uh, let me know. Uh, so let's just talk a little bit about my Etsy store before I sort of go on to these pens again and talk about the process. So I have actually started an Etsy store called Draper Pens and you can find that uh, by just searching Google or you can go to etsy.com I think forward slash uh, Draper Pens. But I'll put that link into the description below. Um, I've only got a couple of pens on there and those are these two. They are both retailing for £157 so if you are interested in these pens uh, then please do go and check them out. Now that sort of does lead me nicely onto a few things uh, just to sort of finalise on this video. If you are considering doing fountain pens, doing a matte finish is definitely the way to go. Uh, it shows off the painting I think far better. It still gives you that protection, so I can just tap on this, no issues, I can scratch against it, no paint's going to come off. And as I say, it does really show off the artwork um, very, very nicely. I do like gloss, and I think it works really well on certain pens of a certain size, but on these two, you know, this is personal preference and you may disagree. I prefer the, the matte finish, and just purely because I think the size uh, and the reflection you get can sometimes hide the details on these uh, smaller pens. But anyway, uh, just let's talk a little bit about the process, and I'll use my first pen as the example. So if you're actually doing this, all you simply need to do, and this can work for any pen, simply remove the barrel, put it onto a pencil, go outside, if you've got a, a ventilator mask, wear it, and then you're just going to spray it very lightly with some white acrylic primer and then just let that set for about five minutes then give it a second coat and then you should have a totally white pen at the end of it. Once you've done that it's a simple case of using your media of choice. Uh, Russian ma um, macro artists, I think that's the term, um, I could be wrong, apologies if so, uh, they use something called tempura paint. Um, it's not the only paint they use but tempura paint is one of the oldest paints uh, known to uh, mankind and it's <clears throat> basically made out of egg essentially egg and um, pigment so it's a very old paint but it's one which they use and it's uh, something which I might actually investigate in um, at some stage as well so that's one media you can use you can also use um, enamel paints apparently and you can also use oil paints now I've not tried those three medias but again it's something I might try and like I said previously in the video, I would ideally like to do Rushi next. So, yeah, look out for that in the future. Um, <laughs> I do like jumping into things um, headfirst without really doing a lot of research. And I know Rushi does take a lot of work. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that uh, pans out. Anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of uh, these finishes. Whilst um, I know quite a lot of people do like gloss, these can take up to about a month to properly cure and in fact I've got one upstairs which still has them cured after about three months. So whether it's something to do with the plastic underneath which is um, stopping it from curing, I don't know. Which is why actually on these Lamis, if you are okay with being matte, it's certainly the way to go. And uh, I certainly haven't found a... Oh, what's the word? Hmm. Not a varnish, a lacquer. There we go. <laughs> I certainly haven't found a lacquer which um, has given me a finish which I'm 100% um, happy with. Eventually, I may invest in a lathe and then start using CA glue because it's the quickest way to do it and it will give you the best results. So, um, outside of using Arushi. 
Uh, so that's something which I'll certainly consider in the future. But if you are a custom pen maker, um, again, you know, do reach out to me because I would be really interested in uh, collaborating uh, potentially. Uh, if you've got um, any particular pens which you might want painted, I do take custom orders as well. Anyway, I hope you found that uh, video useful, so please do go and check out my store. Um, if there's something there which you might like to purchase, then do please consider it. And don't forget to hit that uh, bell icon, subscribe, like, and then leave a comment if there's uh, something which you would like to discuss about this video. Anyway, I hope that helped. I know this is a rather short video, but like I said, it's not a pen review and it really is just to talk about the updates on these pens. Anyway, thank you for listening and I shall see you in the next video. Till then, goodbye for now.